So welcome to the Civil Service Fast Stream Diversity Internship Pro and Diversity Internship Program video interview webinar. And my name is Orisi Komi, and I'm going to be going through what the civil service is looking for from today's uh, webinar. So what to expect from this webinar? I'll be going through a series of what a video interview is and looking through the, going through an overview about the civil service, uh, about what the civil service are, are looking for and really covering the competencies. So going through the competencies that will be assessed during the video interview stage, as well as looking at uh, examples of strength-based interview questions and also looking at what a strength-based interview is. Uh, we'll go through the STAR technique and uh, hopefully by the end of the webinar, we'll get the chance to practice some questions where hopefully some of you will be, you know, be able to um, sort of volunteer yourselves to do a live practice. So that's what to expect and that's what we're going to be covering uh, today. If you have any questions, I would suggest to, um, maybe leave them to the end. Or if you do want to ask them during the session, I may not be able to respond until the uh, end of the, towards the end of the webinar. So I just want to make that clear. So in terms of a video, what is a video interview? So there are two forms of video interviews. And one is known as uh, a video interview that uses a sort of live a video um, interview using the likes of Skype or um, or live or FaceTime, for example, as a way to conduct interviews with candidates. Whereas um, this form of interview, that is, uh, the civil service video interview, is more of a recorded uh, video interview where you record your answers to uh, questions, so pre populated questions. And with this type of interview, there is no interaction with an actual uh, person on the other end. So you're just responding to your questions. Sort of uh, pre-populated uh, questions, and and then you move on to the next question. So that's what this uh, this form of video interview for the civil service is going to be about. In terms of overview and what to how this process works, so this will last approximately twenty minutes, consisting of eight questions, and the responses are recorded on a video platform, as I mentioned and you can use your PC, laptop, tablet, or a mobile phone to respond to, um, to record your answers. And there, are, there is a short introductory guidance video on the platform, which you can also watch before you start um, the actual interview. And there's a practice question included as well to give you where you can record your responses to this question as often as you wish. You can only record your response to the actual question once, meaning there'll be no follow-up question. Unlike a face-to-face -face interview where they may ask you a follow-up question with this, there is no follow-up question expected. So you only have that one chance to respond to, your, to the question and then you move on to the next. So this is how this um, civil service interview is going to work. So in terms of what the civil service are looking for, um, there are a set of core companies that they focus on during the, civil, during the video interview stage. And these are the collaborating and partnering, building capability for all, managing a quality service and delivering at pace. So the questions asked will be about your experience and also what you enjoy and find motivating. So things like, why do you want to work? Why the, why the fast stream program? What is it that you hope to bring to the fast stream program? What is it that you hope to get out of the fast stream program, for example? So it's really looking into, you know, your experience and also looking into what you enjoy and find motivating, which hence why is those so you're utilizing the strength-based interview style. And so what I'm not going to do is to go through what the competence, just to, uh, this talk further on the different competencies that, that the civil service are, will be, the video interview will be focusing on. So, when the civil service says collaborating and partnering, what do they mean? By collaborating and partnering, civil service means that people who are team players. So people, uh, so this requires people, um, looks at people who are able to work collaboratively, sharing information appropriately and building a supportive, trusting and professional relationships with colleagues and a wide range of people within and outside the civil service. 
whilst having the confidence to challenge assumptions. So for example, you know, it's about in this case, you know, if you if there was a question around that focus on this competencies is looking at, you know, demonstrating times where you have worked in a team and what, what the situation was and what the outcome of that situation was where you worked in the team. So you may want to think about, you know, the, can I say what if you could right now think about ways that way you've demonstrated, you know, working in a team in an effective manner. Um, it's about thinking about those examples and for example, you may use things like, you know, working in a group uh, as a, with, uh, within a group for your university project, or it could be at work for those of you who might already be working or have worked in retail, for example. So it's just looking at um, moments where you've been really pleased and really satisfied with yourself in terms of how you worked well within a team. Because the reason why I say that is just, just as an example is, when you share something that you were really happy about and you thought really demonstrated your um, ability to collaborate and work in, in a partnership or within a team, that is something that becomes more of a, a second nature to, 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 to speak about. And, you know, your energy it also reflects your energy and your body language and your posture when speaking about something that you really enjoyed and you're really satisfied. So again, it's about thinking about examples that reflect that. Again, just want to point out, especially with the word partnering and collaborating, because the it's easy one mistake that's very common is again partnering may mean might mean something else to you or to within different organizational settings especially to those of you who already work in so in this case it's important to understand what the civil service mean when they say partnering so it's about familiarizing yourself with what they mean so you can find this out in your in the competency framework document which i believe all if not all of you should have a copy of that now or should have gone through it so it's really focusing on understanding what they mean before you even try to attempt the questions. And then the second part is building capability for all. Again, what this means, again, um, in, in the civil service context is people is having a strong focus on continuous learning for oneself, others, and the organization. So it's looking at how, you know, how do you develop yourself? How do you, you know, keep your knowledge current? And this was thinking about why would this be important? Why would this, you know, why would the civil service want to know how people, you know, build capability for themselves? I.e., how do they enhance their learning or continue their learning? Because as a civil servant, you know, you're working in the government, you know, on current affairs. So it's actually looking at how you, you know, keep yourself updated as to what's happening. So, for example, there are things in the news at the moment which if not all of you, I hope you, probably you, you've gone through already to really understand and get yourself familiar with, would be Brexit. So that's a, a major topic that all fast streamers are currently, not all fast streamers, but majority of fast streamers are currently working on. So these are the things that I want to see how you keep yourself up to date and keep your learning going. And uh, also you ask yourself, actually, why would that be important to an organization? So someone who keeps, the, who keeps themselves um, preoccupied and in terms of keep the learning going, they're likely to add value to that organization through a number of ways. With the civil service, I can think of some of those ways could be, you know, utilizing uh, taxpayers' money efficiently and getting the most out of, um, you know, the resources at your disposal and really, you know, getting, you know, making the most out of whatever resources you have available. So this is what they look for in, 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 civil, in a civil servant. So it's about thinking about how moments where you would have demonstrated these that you were really, really, really liked or pleased about. So that's building capability for all. And the next one is managing the quality service. So what do the civil service mean when they say managing the quality service? What they mean is so effectiveness in this area is about valuing and modeling professional excellence and expertise to deliver service objectives, taking, it, taking account of diverse customer needs and requirements. So again, why is this important? Um, so managing the quality service is about looking at how, you know, how people, people who are effective. So looking at how um, you manage stuff on a day-to-day -day basis, for example, how you plan, organize, and manage your time and activities to deliver a high quality service and secure reliable and efficient service and applying programs. Basically looking at how you manage workload. Due to the nature of, uh, of the type of work that civil servants do, you know, it's, it's very crucial and could, you know, impacts millions, thousands of millions of lives. That is why it's important. Again, yes, situations may change, there's pressure and things may happen that you never expected. For example, 
No one saw Brexit coming until the referendum was called and the votes took place and now Brexit is happening. So there are moments where things that you probably did not expect could actually just come to you and you have to work on you know, urgently as a civil servant. So it's about looking at how do you ensure that you manage that by ensuring that you're delivering to the set objectives and what's been, you know, what following the brief and de delivering it uh, according to the brief. So they're looking at how do you utilize your time? How do you plan? How do you ensure you deliver a quality service? So what resources do you use? Do you use project management uh, tech software? Do you use Excel spreadsheet? Do you use your calendar? They just want to see how you plan and organize yourself, basically. This is what they're looking for at this stage. And the next stage is delivering that pace. Again, what do they mean by delivering that pace? What is effect? What is an effective delivering that pace? So effectiveness in this area means focusing on delivering timely performance with energy and taking responsibility and accountability for quality outcomes. So for all staff, it's about working to agreed goals and activities and dealing with challenges in a responsive and constructive way. So this is what the civil service means by when they say collaborating and partnering, building capability for all, managing a quality service and delivering at pace. And finally, it also considers strengths relating to, the, to things that you find energizing. So strength-based interview, some of you may already, for those of you who may not be familiar with the term strength-based interview, in that sense, it's an interview that, you know, focuses on what you enjoy doing, what you're good at, and what, you know, what energizes you and what, what you know, motivates you to come alive. So this is a, a new approach that most employers are starting to shift into. So moving away from the competency-based interview to really find out what people truly enjoy and find motivating as a way of selecting candidates. So one way, uh, a framework, which again, some of you might already be familiar with, is known as the STAR technique, um, which stands for situation, task, action, and result. So this is a framework that, in essence, you can use to really structure your answer and responses to the questions. Normally, as some of the questions are most likely going to ask you to give a situation where you did X, 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 or where you did A and B. Um, so again, that gives a clue as to what they, you know, how to, a way to actually respond to that question. And they'll ask you as well, what, what was the outcome or what was the result of the situation, the action that you took? So again, the STAR technique is a framework that you can use to respond to the interview questions. And for those of you who, you know, are not familiar with what start, the, the STAR technique, uh, the S stands for situation, T stands for such as under last size, so T stands for task and A is for action and R is for results. So again, with this, you want to spend about 10% of your time uh, on the situation. And so by 10%, I mean 10% of that two minutes that you have to respond to each question. And then spend about 50% on the action, which is the main bit that you really want to focus on and really get sharp and succinct in terms of what actions you took. This is where you, they really get to delve into your world and understand you know, you as a person and how you think and behave um, against what they're looking for in the competency areas. And then results, you want to sort of summarize of uh, using the last 25 minutes with that two minutes to really summarize what the outcome was. Again, results doesn't mean that you always have to have the results that you expected. In a situation where you didn't achieve the, a set result, for example, you can say, give reflection and actually you can use the R for reflection on what you learn from that process and what you would do differently if you were to find yourself in that situation again. So hints and tips. Main thing is, you know, watch the short introductory guidance videos. Or think about what you are good at, enjoy and what motivates you. Engage with the question. By this is, you know, is being, you know, your, how you portray yourself and being, um, you know, having a clear voice projection. Again, uh, it's easy to be nervous during this process. It's understandable. But what you may want to do is actually think about, okay, how can I, if I find myself in a place where I feel nervous, how can I better manage my nerves? So one way you could do so is to stand up and, um, you know, when recording your video, to have your phone in somewhere quite high. So you stand up, have a straight posture so that your voice projection is a lot clearer and louder. And also you want to smile as a way to really see that you're really interested in engaging the questions. And then obviously it's important to make sure you're answering the question as well. 
and uh, you want to be positive. You want to maintain eye contact with the camera, and and also, you know, because it's a video interview, again, it doesn't mean that you know we rock up in our t-shirts and uh, you know whatever we feel uh, normal casual wear. You still want to maintain that professional look by dressing for an interview as if you're going for a face-to-face -face interview. Again, you want to spend about two and a half minutes per question, about 250 words per question. Again, this is unofficial, but it's just roughly, if you work out the maths of saying you have a, a 20 minutes for eight questions, so you may want to, it works out around about two, point, uh, two and a half minutes per question. Again, is that make sure you thank the interviewer after you're done answering the last question, and if appropriate, state your interest in the position. And I just want to focus on this last one, which is focus on the now, because, you know, at this moment, at that moment of you, when you're doing your video interview, you can, the only thing you're in control of is your responses to the questions. Everything else is out of your control. So what you don't want to do is to focus on what you're not in control of, or instead focus on what you can actually manage, which is talk, just talking about yourself and talking about how awesome you are and all the awesome stuff that you have done and really showcase that in a confident manner that really shows that, yes, you are the right fit for the role because you demonstrate the competencies and actually what they're looking for. You can give evidence and what you've done so and the actions you took and the results of those. So that's really what to go through. So you wanna focus on what you're in control of and not in the future. So before you get started, you may, you know, make sure that you are in a quiet environment where there's no distraction or anyone disturbing you. Um, you may want to set aside an hour where you're free from distractions to give yourself plenty of time to relax your mind and ease it before you start the practice, before you start the interview. And again, it's about dress presentably and dress appropriately as if you're going for a face-to-face -face interview and have adequate lighting in your room, whatever room you're in. Because the last thing you want to do is to be recording yourself and your face that, you know, the lighting, if the lighting is not so good in the room, it may not actually allow the interviewer to see you. It might be distracting to the interviewer. Um, again, that's something that you want to, you don't want to happen and, you know, try to avoid by having adequate lighting in the room. And um, there's something else that the people do various things, uh, such as you may want to post a picture of someone that inspires you or something that generates a positive mood um, that generates a positive feeling inside of you. So you may want to have that stuck behind obviously, the camera so that whilst you're recording, you, you, you know, you're able to see that person or see that thing that, you know, energizes you or that makes you feel positive. Or it might be a role model, for example, that you may want to include. And as well, you may want to play a music. So before I started this webinar, I played, um, I, I played a song just to really get myself in a frame of mind and to get myself fully present to to this webinar so that's something you may want to do just to get your mind energized and fully you know positive before you get started um, so that's something that you may also want to practice so we're now going to go through some practice questions but before doing so does anyone have any questions so far so i have a response to Someone's asked, can I use headphone speaker? Is that because the line isn't so clear? Can everyone, is everyone, can everyone hear me all right? Oh, I understand the question. Sorry, the question was, can you use headphones for a video interview, headphone speaker? That is a very good question. I would say no, try and avoid using headphone speaker um, unless your phone is broken or unless the device that you're using is broken, no, it's, 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 not, it's not working properly that requires a headphone speaker, but I would suggest to not to use a headphone speaker for the video interview. That's a very good question. Any more questions before I move on to the practice questions? Again, just want to say, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A tab to ask your questions. Thank you. Okay, going to move on. So here are some example questions that they may ask you. So, um, 
such as what would you say is a successful day and what unique qualities could you bring to the civil service and what do you find is always left until last or undone on your to-do list or what do you enjoy doing in your spare time and what would you say is your biggest weakness so these are examples of strength-based questions they may ask you these are this is just i'm not saying this is the question that you'll be asked but these are examples of strength-based questions that may come across that you may be you may come across uh, during the uh, interview i'm just going to also go through other types of questions that may be more uh, probably more relevant to the civil service and that could be you know give evidence of how your personal qualities rather than qualifications would contribute to a successful fast stream role so that's an example of a question that you could be asked so it's about giving evidence of how your personal qualities rather than your qualifications would then contribute to a successful fast stream role and other questions could be why do you want to participate in the fast stream program and what do you think you might gain from being on the fast stream program so these are potential questions that you may be asked again don't worry if you're not taking i was uh, taking notes i will send the video again so for you to, to replay and hear the questions um again but if you can take notes now by all means do so so other questions that they may ask you particularly around the competencies may be things like, you know, when has your contribution to teamwork enhanced a team's success? They could say, describe the situation and how your contribution led to a successful outcome. So again, straight away, a question like this tells me that they are asking about collaborating and partnering. So it's actually, it's actually, it's actually when is your contribution to teamwork enhanced a team's success? And describe the situation and how your contribution led to a successful outcome. Other questions may be, could be, you know, we have, we have all had times when something we are responsible for does not work out as well as we hoped it would be. Describe such a situation, your actions and what you learned from that experience. Straight away, that has star technique written all over it. So they'll ask you for the situation, they'll ask you for the action that you took and what you learned from the process. Again, when you look at looking at this question, it's asking, say, we have all had times when something we're responsible for does not work out as well as we had hoped for. So already if I was to ask actually what, what competency would you say they're looking for in this area? Again, what comes to mind, uh, some of you may have already figured it out, but what comes to mind when I read this is, you know, building capability for all. So looking at how you improve. So it's something that, you know, yeah, you're doing hasn't gone well. What can you do to learn? What can you do to actually improve on your learning? You know, how can you better enhance your learning? So again, this is asking about learning. So that's a clue there to say this is a building capability for all. And then another question that I may ask you could be, you know, when have you taken a new or innovative approach in order to achieve a desired outcome? So to say, describe the situation, your approach, and where whether it was effective. So when I look at this question, it talks about desired outcome to achieve desired outcome. And again, it makes you think about what competences could this be talking about? So example of such question, I'm not saying these are the questions that will come up, but this is just example questions. It could be, you know, thinking about, oh, changing and improving. So these are the type of questions that you may be asked in the video interview, as well as the ones on the screen. So it's looking at things like your, your weaknesses, you know, what you enjoy doing in your spare time. So what I'd love to do now is to really, is to hopefully, uh, to us to practice some of these questions and to really go through, to make sure we use this next 25 minutes to answer as many questions as possible, to discuss how to structure the questions, how to approach the questions and what to, you know, what can be included in it's all the questions that we've gone through already. So, um, She'd love to find out if anyone, anyone who would uh, be happy to volunteer themselves to uh, do a practice with me. So if that's you, just drop me a yes to say I would like to do a practice. Again, just want to say um, this is a practice session. It's not about getting it wrong or right. Again, some of you may not feel comfortable doing so. But I just want to encourage you, if you can, 
to please take part because then you know not only would you learn from it it also benefits other people to learn and it gets you you know gets you um a bit more uh you know used to the process and what's even good about this is it's almost a form of video interview because we're interacting over webinar except this is a live webinar but it just gives you into having to actually respond to questions where you can't actually see the person um you know see the person asking you the questions so who would like to um who would like to volunteer or volunteer themselves to do a practice with me? Or we can start with questions first of all, and then maybe someone may choose to volunteer themselves. So from the questions I've gone through so far, do you guys have any questions or anything that you'd like for me to elaborate further on? Or um, or provide further clarity. Well, what I can do is to pick one of the questions I went through earlier and to, to talk about how you would approach these questions, and then from there we can then um, hopefully have more questions or further questions on the back of that. So I'm going to pick one of the questions that I went through earlier. So I'll pick, um, what should I pick? I would pick, oh, I have a response. So someone's asked, what would be a good answer for why the civil service? That is a very good question. So with this question, what they really one thing I would say before responding to a question, actually, what do they really want to know if they're asking you why you want to be, why you want to join the civil service? So with this, you want to think of, it's really in essence, an opportunity for you to say exactly why you want to join the organization. So what motivated you? Why have you applied? What is that thing that, you know, for example, are there, is there a, something that drove you? Is there a personal story? For example, is there a personal experience that led you to, uh, wanting to apply to the civil service? Is there a, are you someone who's passionate about making a difference? Do you want to impact policies? Again, they just want to hear why you want to join. And the reason behind this is to understand people's motivation. When employers ask this question, they're asking about your motivation behind why, why you want to join the organization so that they know that if your motivation is right or not. Because the last thing, you know, you can, as you would appreciate that, bringing the new staff is expensive, it's a costly process. And you don't want to go through all that process and then bring in the wrong person. So this is why they usually ask that question first of all, tell us about why you want to work for us to understand your motivation. There's a chance for them to actually get to know what your real driver is and to see how you can assess actually how you potentially make a difference within the organization. Say for example, if there's a particular area that you care about that you want to see implemented as a policy area, you can say this is why, you know, it could be, you know, from especially from a, you might be from a, a, a diverse a black age minority ethnic background. Say, an example could be because the civil service, you know, you feel the civil service isn't as reflective as the society that it serves, and you know, you're passionate about diversity and inclusion, and you want to ensure that you know the needs of everyone in society is met. So again, that takes us to what the civil service is there for, and you can say, you could say that. Um, by joining the fostering program, you hope to contribute towards the civil service meeting the needs of wider society and re reflecting the needs of the wider society that it serves. And um, if you have time, you may, if there's a personal story, a person, uh, something that's personal to you that you feel is relevant, you also may want to add it to that question. So the trick is you just want to spend some time to actually maybe list a set of bullet points as to what the reasons why you want to work in the civil service and choose the one that you think, you know, best describes or best would best articulate or cover all of the other ones or the other reasons why you want to work there. So that's how I would, you know, how you could uh, approach that question. So was that helpful? I hope that, I hope that was helpful and that gave you a bit more light as to what, how to approach that question. And um, that's the question that people normally, you know, get a bit, uh, sort of thrown by um so it's a good question that you've asked and another thing i could add to that is if you give an example you'd also think about how your why links to the civil service um 
civil service uh, core values, which are um, integrity, impartiality, objectivity, and what is the last one? They are four uh, objectives. So they are honesty, integrity, impartiality, and objectivity. So you might want to think actually how your why links to that. So if I was to throw that question back to you, uh, Naima, my question would be, why do you want to work for the civil service? Again, don't worry about getting the, given a, a, a perfectly formulated or structured answer. I'm just keen to hear what your reasons are for wanting to work as a BFR streamer in the civil service. And this question also applies to everyone. You know, why, why, why do you all, what are the reasons why you've chosen to all apply to, to be on the fast stream program? I would be happy to share why they, why, um, who'd be happy to share the, 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 the why behind applying to the fast stream. Whilst I'm waiting, in the meantime, I can go through. Is there any other areas that you guys would like me to go through in terms of uh, any particular questions that you'd like me to um, explain how how to approach it? So someone's responded by saying, I would like to apply for the civil service faster because I see it as an opportunity to make a difference and have an input on policies that affect young people like myself. That's a good, that, that's good. I think it's something that we can work with definitely. So my question could be, if you could, uh, could you expand that further by being a bit more specific by saying, when you say make a difference, um, what do you mean by making a difference? Because this is what, as an interviewer, I'll be curious to think, oh, what does she mean by making a difference? Um, to make, make, I'm just curious to actually know what you mean. And are there also thinking, oh, are there any particular policy areas that you're interested in or are there any areas that you're particularly interested in? Young people, yes, I get it. But if you could also be more specific by saying, is there any particular issues that, that's affecting young people that you have an interest in? So the clue to my response, the, the, the clue to that is, you want to be as specific as possible uh, when responding to these questions. And also, you know, remembering that the interviewer is not, doesn't know you or they cannot see what you're thinking or know what's going on in, in your head in essence. So it's, that's why it's important to actually get it all out there and um, bring out so they know exactly what you mean. So it's about being specific. So if you can think about the SMART objective, so using the, the, the S of the smart objective for now by just saying, you know, just be specific what, what you mean, trying to be as detailed as possible. Because what that means is what it gives you, it means that you can uh, just get straight to the point and give it things without wasting, spending too much time um, on in responding to the question as well. And it also allows you to really get out what you need to get out that would, you know, add value to the interviewer um, as well. And just one thing I want to add, Every question you respond to, you want to link it back to a competency area. If it's obvious what competency area they're looking, they 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 they, they want that they, they fo that question is focusing on. By all means, respond. Make sure your answer, you know, responds to the competency areas. Because the mistake that people have made, and I, I have certainly made in the past, I would give a question, I would give an answer to a question without linking it back to the particular competency that the organisation is looking for. So that's one thing to bear in mind. Um, so Naime said, I want to join the fast stream as I want the opportunity to work and make a difference in everyday public services, especially when it comes to clean air and making sure our environment is protected. 
that's good because what was strong about um, this answer which you've given a particular area so as an interviewer it helps us to see what you're interested in so i think okay clean air and making sure everyone is protected that's something that's current in, in the media at the moment so my thing is how you can potentially even build that further by even being more specific is by saying has there been an example where you've worked on a project or uh, or something related to this how have you demonstrated basically your interest um in 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 clean air and making sure our environment is protected. So if I was to ask you that, Naima, how have you demonstrated this, your interest in clean air and making sure the environment is protected? If you could share that with me, that would be fun. Uh, I'm keen to hear if there's any ways you've demonstrated it. It might be through, you might have not done anything about it, which is fine. Um, or you might have been to conferences or seminars or did a dissertation or worked in the industry. So just giving examples about what you've done also gives an extra value to the answer as well. So someone said, I want to join the fast stream to enhance my career and skills already gained on a bigger platform with real development potential. Okay, that's good, I get it. I get why you want to work. So I suppose what I would add to say with the answer again is try to be a bit more specific because specific currently it seems very, um, it's, it's, it's applicable, something that would be applicable to any organization where it doesn't say much about why the civil service, you know, yes, you know, there are other large, uh, sort of bigger platforms that you could, you know, realize your potential, such as there are other firms. So the question is, how does this link to the civil service? How does this link to what the civil service are looking for? How does this link to, you know, the, the civil services um, core values? You know, has there been, a, can you give examples of where you've demonstrated things that reflects the civil services competencies or what they're looking for as an organization or the nature of work that, they, that, that, that they're in. So um, for example, the response to the, the previous response was, you know, give an example of clean air, making sure environment is protected. Again, that's an area that the government is responsible for. So you may want to think about just giving specific um, examples or situations that helps the interviewer or the person who will watch the video to give them a picture of who you are as a person because they cannot see you. Or well, I'm sorry, they can see you, my apologies, they can see you, uh, but just give them an idea to actually know what you're interested in and what type of person you are um, to make an effective decision as well. So um, response was, I've worked in an anonymous response to interest in clean air and environment is uh, making sure environment is protected is so I've worked in field projects where I collected samples to measure the decline in floral and fauna. Um, I, it has an impact on our clean air. I read about current and new scientific research in this area. So again, that's excellent. And the reason why that this is excellent because now by you adding something like this, it gives, as an, as an employer, it makes me feel like, wow, already I'm drawn into your response. I'm thinking, yes, this person definitely, definitely has an, they're not just saying this for the sake of it, they have shown evidence where they have demonstrated their interest. So again, it makes me feel like if I bring this person on board, they will most likely be in my organization for a long term, as opposed to just be there for a year or two and then move on. It shows that this is something that they potentially be here for the foreseeable future. So this is why employers, again, ask this question. They want to be able to project to see how, how long are you likely going to be in the organization for to see if your interests align with what they do. So that's another, so that's a really good example. So what I'd say is, you know, use real life examples that was what you've done when responding to the questions. So think about how you can fit that in under two minutes or under 250 words when responding to the questions. I think I said I was gonna go through uh, collaborating and partnering, but I don't think I've actually done that yet. Um, so in terms of collaborating and partnering, so I hope that's a useful response, uh, Naima. Boy, that's a really good example you've given. So again, I hope if you guys can all see this, I would say, you know, what you wanna make note of how you can you know add extra layer it's like you're peeling an onion so peeling off the layers where you can actually see exactly what's at core in terms of what you have done um so you want to just imagine peeling that onion until you get to the real bottom of the onion where there's no more layer to peel and that's really the juicy part that you really want to focus on when responding to the questions that's the answer you really want to give because it gives them a chance to actually delve into your world and see what you have done so back to collaborating and partnering. So what has your contribution to teamwork enhanced uh, a team's success? So if I was to ask this question to everyone, actually, um, if I was to ask, could anyone, is anyone willing, happy to share, you know, when 
has their contribution to teamwork enhance a team's success? Who would be happy to share that? I'm really keen. Who, who I just I, I would like a volunteer, someone to just a volunteer to um you know engage in a in a comments whereby people can actually hear you as well. Because I think that would add so much value to. I mean, it's good, but obviously you can type if that's what you feel comfortable in doing. But I just want to just put it out there to someone who's who's willing to actually um, speak so everyone else can hear. Because I think that would add. Okay. Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge said or volunteer. I don't know what your name is, so apologies. Um, Fab, bear with me. I'm going to get you. Thank you for volunteering. So you should now be able to speak shortly. I'm just trying to unmute the mic from my end. Okay, Samsung Galaxy S7, you should now be able to speak. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Already, yes. Fantastic. What's your name? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I thought I'd put my name in. Uh, it's Jatinda Full. Oh, Jatinda. Hi. Hi, Oris. You all right? Hi. Uh, how are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. Sorry. I, I thought I'd put my name in, but it's for some reason. <laughs> no worries. I was just, I was just be wondering, thinking like, who's Samsung Galaxy S7? <laughs> yeah. Good. Go so, for it. Yeah. So, um, in terms Samsung of collaborating. Yeah, if you would, yeah, sorry, yeah. So the question was, uh, this is looking at uh, collaborating and partnering. So so when has your contribution to teamwork enhanced a team's success? Yeah, so uh, initially on one of the modules um, uh, last year, um, we had uh, um, a task where we had to provide the whole class with a, uh, a seminar, so take control of a seminar. And um, we were putting groups of three and um, in my particular group, um, I think one of the two of the people were uncomfortable with actually standing up and presenting and actually making notes on the board. Um, so what I initially did then was actually work out the work, that, how we could divide it so everybody felt comfortable. So the people that didn't feel comfortable about presenting, you know, could actually collaborate with the, the teams in the discussion. So as opposed to standing up and making notes and just talking to the team as a whole, they could actually, once we divide the teams into discussions, they could actually sit at the table, take notes and actually speak to the, the other students uh, on a more personal basis. Um, so what I initially did was um, I took control and actually alleviated the pressure of the group by um, being able to take control of the board and actually talking to the uh, students when discussing the seminar, taking the uh, pressure away from my, my fellow peers uh, and actually uh, completing the seminar successfully. Excellent. First of all, I want to say thank you for um, volunteering to, uh, you know, volunteering yourself to be to, to, to share. So I know, uh, yeah, I just want to acknowledge you for that. And, um, and uh, yeah, so thanks for, also thanks for your response as well. I mean, how did you find that? Um, I, I found it um, quite um, good because um, I felt that, you know, I was um, a bit more confident than the others. I've done it before and um, it was daunting in terms of doing it in front of my peers, my students, the class in my, um, my actual peers. But uh, once I got going, I found that, you know, in terms of preparation, you know, being preparing the actual material, knowing what we are discussing. And as soon as um, I was able to, I was able to then answer the questions that the other students had, make the notes on the board and actually keep it moving, keep the seminar moving with the discussion. Excellent. And could you describe the situation, you've described the situation already, and how yeah. would you say your contribution led to this, a successful outcome? Yeah, my contribution led because the biggest part of the seminar is the actual um, discussion uh, as a group, so you, the, the the initial small discussions are only five ten minute discussions, but the the actual rest of the fifty minutes are uh, the discussion uh, as a group. And I think um, I I led to the successful completion of this because I I kind of led the discussion overall uh, with the group mm -hmm. and also recorded notes on the board uh, and put the actual ideas of the students on the board for them to the for them to actually make notes as well. So I've actually. Um, contributing to the actual demonstration of, of our topic um, mm -hmm. and and uh, presenting it in a way where the students and, and the feedback we got was that all the students felt like it was presented in a clear way and they took away um, 
what we were actually presenting very well. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. And um, would you, are you happy to give some feedback to the response as well? Sorry? Yeah, so are you happy to give some feedback to your response? Yeah, 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 that's fine, yeah. Excellent. So what I would add to that, I think what was good from the beginning, you stated that, you know, you went straight from situation and task and already you set the scene for um, of your response. Again, that was quite good right from the beginning. It was quite short as well, straight to the point. So I think that was really strong. And um, also you used some of the, repeated some of the words that, from the questions, for example, you know, um, like my contribution. So it's always good because when you refer back to a question, it's a good practice anyway. That was really positive. And you were able to also say what you, what actions you took, which I thought was quite um, evident as well and how you gave clear direction to show what steps that you took in achieving that. And there's an area that I could give to you to take that to the next level would be, again, because there's a two, you have two and a half, uh, on average two and a half minutes per question, is you want to be as uh, sort of concise as possible, uh, where you, you know, say, you sort of short, succinct, straight to the point answer, and then once you're done, leave it and move on. The main thing is answering what, saying what they want to hear and then just move on. Um, how you could do that is, and there's a particular area where I thought, you know, you could maybe you could have focused a lot more on actually what you did and to leave out what happened as in what, other, what was going on in that process. That's usually within the action part, I felt, there was almost a bit of a storytelling about what else happened and um, the danger is you can actually lose an, an interviewer. All oh, right. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So what you want to focus on actually just the steps that you took, i.e. which you mentioned. So you gave clear direction, you took leadership, you, you, know, you supported the team, you elevated the pressure from the team. And you can also even break that further by saying, okay, what in that situation, what was the thing that you actually did that you felt really led to the success of the team? And what I got, maybe again, this is obviously is a practice session, is to maybe you know, take a step back to actually think about the question first of all. Maybe you have about 30 seconds to think about the question before responding as well. Yeah. Because yeah. I fall in that temptation where I'm just like, boom, I just give an answer straight away. Um, so you want to actually think, okay, what are they asking me here? What do they actually want to know? And then just say what they want to know and leave it. Yeah, instead of waffling. Yeah, I know what yeah. you mean. Yeah. So with that feedback, is there anything that, what would you do differently? Or what can you see yourself that you would do differently now if, uh, if you were to respond to that question? What I would do differently is we would probably um, probably do a bit more better planning. Mm. So I mean, in terms of like, in your response to the question, well, how, would you re how would you respond differently to the question? The question on um, what has your, how was your contribution or when was your contribution to a teamwork enhance the team success and describe the situation and how your contribution led to success. How would you respond to that question differently now? Sorry, could you repeat that? My question is, how would you respond to the question differently for the, the question on, on um, collaborating and partnering, which was, you know, when was when has your contribution to teamwork enhanced team success and describe the situation and how your contribution led to a successful outcome? So if you were to respond to that question now, following the feedback, what would you do differently? Or oh, what I do differently, um, yeah. I, 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 again, what you're saying is, you, you, with the time frames, you can't, you can't. As much as you, you want to put everything in there, you can't put everything in there. Waffle. Mm -hmm. You have to be a bit more concise. Yeah. And not feel that you haven't said enough because, like you say, being concise um, is better than giving too much detail and being able to cover all, uh, like you say, the situation the task, but being able to cover a bit more on the action. Um, yeah. And then, and then summarizing with the result, uh, like you say, keep it short and brief, get to the point, and then, then move on, yeah. Yeah, and I like, that's something that you said that I really want to highlight on as well, which is, you know, um, you feel like you, you haven't said, said, said enough. And it's, it's interesting because as a human being, for some reason, we, we you know, naturally, I'm like that as well. I'm like, I haven't said enough though. <laughs> I want to say more. And one thing I'm having to learn, I've had to learn over the years, is, um, you know, give a short summary. Yeah, you know? definitely. Yeah. yeah, just give a short summary. If the person wants to know more, they will call you for an assessment day where they can actually get to know more about you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I think that's what, I, and I, what we made, what you could do, for example, is to go through these questions and actually write, you know, examples and um, maybe list out the things that you did 
the actions that you took and whatever the question is, just listen at the action that you actually think you took that led to a successful outcome or whatever they, they're asking you and really, um, and really selling that that's really what they really want to hear the most. That's what's important. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. I hope that was useful. Yeah, yeah, no, it was. Yeah, definitely. Like I say, I'll, um, um, we still, we're still, we're still carrying on, aren't we? With the, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Excellent. So, yeah, um, thank it. you, thank you again, uh, Justina, for 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 doing that. So, yeah. would anyone else like to go next to practice up another practice question? So, I can have to spend another so five ten minutes before. So, to go until ten past five. So I'm really keen for everyone to get as much out of this. Would anyone like to volunteer themselves? Yeah. So whilst I'm waiting for a potential volunteer, um, I'm just going to respond to Aisha's question, which was, I noticed you said it's around 2.5 minutes, so we get a bit longer than two minutes. So it's two point five minutes is just a split between twenty minutes per eight questions. Uh, so it's about spend about half uh, half a minute to read the question and two minutes to respond. So roughly, it's just my, it's not official. That's just more of a, an estimate. That um, just a suggestion for myself on um, how to respond to it. I hate when people say that. So if we don't have any other volunteer, Justina, would you be able to do uh, another question? Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, you, want me, you would like me to do another question, please? Yeah. Um, we don't have any other volunteer at the moment. Yeah, yeah, don't mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, so I'm going to pick a question on building capability for all. The question is, we have all had times when something we are responsible for does not work out as well as we had hoped it would. Describe such a situation your actions and what you learned from that experience. Sorry, yeah, please, yeah. Okay, so he's, we have all had times when something we are responsible for does not work out as well as we had hoped it would. Describe such a situation, your actions and what you learned from that experience. So I'm just going to go back to the civil service, what they mean by building, building capability uh, for all, just to refresh our memory on that. So by building capability for all, they mean, um, so in this area, it's having a strong focus on continuous learning for once of how we improve ourselves and also how we improve others and the organization. So it's about being open to learning, about keeping one's own knowledge and skill sets current and evolving. So this is what they're looking at actually, are you starting to open to learning? How do you, you know, if you've done something wrong, for example, how do you ensure that you know, things go according to plan? How, what, what, you know, what, 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 how would you address it? So has there been a situation where you have demonstrated that? Is in essence what they want to know. Right. Um, this might be a bit of a tricky one, actually, when I think. Yeah. Um, that's fine. Let, let's work on that. We're back, we're back answering the questions. Let's work on a few things. So has there been a station where, you know, can you think of a moment where, a moment where you, you know, you, you had a, a task or something to work on or something? It, did, it doesn't have to be work related, but it didn't go according to plan. Okay. So something that didn't go to plan. Um... So something that you were responsible for, but did not go as well as you'd hope it would. I mean, I can give an example. So there's project, there's projects that I've worked on that um, we had a, so I led a project on, on an insight day uh, recently. The, the target number was 80 students to attend, but only 45 came. So that didn't go according to plan. So what would I do to put in place um, is, you know, have a meeting with the team to review what steps we took and what didn't understand actually why, why things did not work and to then put measures in place for next year to ensure that it does work. Right, I you saying. Um, just trying to think. Um, probably could be, um, just 
Yeah, in my uh, UATs. Uh, software testing role. Um, mm. So um, initially, we we took on um, we took on a bigger project, um, um, and it was quite a new team. So it was quite. Um, Is this something that you were responsible for? Were you responsible for the project? Would you say? Yeah, I I was responsible for the project, and okay. um, um, as the manager was quite new. Uh, sorry, the man uh, the project was quite new. The manager. Has scheduled um, a completion date for the report uh, by a certain date, and when we got into the project, we realised that the, uh, the the scripts and the and the various requirements from the different departments, as opposed to one department, uh, it was quite big. It was far too big to uh, complete on time. Uh, we didn't anticipate the defects that we faced on the scripts as well in testing, uh, which then had to be sent back to the developers. And the project effectively wasn't completed on time. Uh, I encountered way too many problems uh, for it to be completed on time. Um, so the uh, the action that, that that I initially took was um, I I liaised with the various departments. Um, I spoke with the developers about the problems we faced on this this project, this size, and I actually spoke with my line manager as well. I fed that back and said um, it was just unrealistic to complete by that set day because it was. The biggest project that we'd um, um, had to deal with, and that we had to look at the actual time frames and actually put more planning into a project that size, as opposed to um, it not requiring the planning that smaller projects had done previously. Mm -hmm. um, so the overall action was the the fact that we we reviewed um, the the number of defects. We reviewed the time scales and we reviewed the uh, the backlog of chasing up with the various different departments and the uh, developers were already busy and we, we decided that we we needed to put a better uh, draw up a better plan mm -hmm. where we, we we all we all had a, a meeting where for bigger projects we'd all meet the, the team would meet and we'd look at a better um, planning process in the phase meetings so when mm -hmm. the next project arose um because uh, the, the next projects were likely to be smaller ones. But when the next big project rose, we'd, we'd flag it up, we'd highlight it, we'd say we've got a meeting arranged because we're expecting this project. And then we would um, ensure that we'd be better anticipated uh, to, to encounter what the project would entail to ensure that we, we realistically can comp complete it on time. Yeah. So that would then wouldn't create a knock-on effect, a, a financial penalty, and then create more headache for the developers. Yeah. And if you could, um, in a slightly more concise way, what would you say your learnings were? Uh, my learnings were actually um, anticipating problems. Um, mm. so, 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 so looking ahead and actually, um, you know, looking at what problems we could potentially anticipate because of um, it being a bigger project uh, and actually placing more emphasis on a better say, planning I structure. Say, you've, you've, well, I would say, were you so anticipating problems in itself answers the question? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so we're going to have to get you to just be so concise and <laughs> just get, okay, I've answered it, I'm anticipating problems, boom, that's it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I've got to get used to being a bit concise. Yeah, a bit more practice, but yeah, I think because we're actually talking in this way, that's probably why I'm talking a bit too much. Yeah, but no, I, understand, I, I think, understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So imagine I don't exist when I ask this question. That's not going to be a follow-up question. Sorry? I say imagine me being like, I'm not, imagine I don't exist right now. I was in the video interview, there was, there's not going to be a follow-up question. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, so it's got to be um, concise before you move on. Yeah, everything included before you move on. Yeah. Excellent. Um, yeah, I mean, again, only feedback would, from that would be uh, be concise and, you know, get straight to the point and say what you need to say and then move on to the next. Um, another thing as well, especially building capability for all, in essence, uh, organizations, they're, they're looking for your, your, your attitude to learning because mistakes will happen. Yeah, that's it. And sometimes we think that we, we can't say 
a certain exactly. thing because weak weakness means a negativity and it's not what yeah. they want to hear. So I think and they may judge you. They may judge you. You may, you may feel like it might work against you if you say what you did wrong. Yeah. Well, it's actually no. Exactly. They want to actually, like you own up to mistakes. Actually, this didn't go according to plan, and this is what actions I took. This is what I learned from it, and it's fine because honestly speaking, mistakes happen every day. I'm sure you you just it demonstrated that employers know that. Everyone knows mistakes happen. Well, the key things actually just want to know you're actually to learning. How do you rectify yourself when a mistake is made? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So this applies to everyone. Don't be scared to own up or to say what you've done. That remember that even if you look at the question, what structure is actually when things go according to how you would have hoped? Because meaning we all want things to be successful, but it may not go according to that way. So it doesn't mean that you've actually done anything wrong, but it just didn't go according to how you'd hoped it would have gone. Yeah. yeah. So, definitely. any questions before we run, uh, call it a day? I'm really keen to us. So, so quite, someone's asked, I noticed, so I usually ask, uh, with the mistake question, I guess the action is to say what you would have done differently. That's one way. Yeah, most certainly, yes. Yeah. So, looking at what actually you, you would have done differently upon reflection, that's something that can also be added to um, to the learnings as well, to say, as uh, as Jachinda mentioned about, he could have. Um, was that what was that you mentioned again? Please remind me. Um, what we could have done differently? Uh, yeah, better planning and um, anticipating the mistakes uh, yeah. due, due to it being a big bigger project. Yeah. Yeah, and to add specifically to Aisha's uh, uh, comment is, um, I think the action part of that question is says what action, what actions. Um, so talk about describe the situation. This is a situation. Describe your actions. And it's more, the action part is most talking about what actions you took that may have led to, it's quite vague, it's actually, actually you took that may have led to the project not going according to plan, and also or what actions you took or that you could have taken differently in the reflective side of things to say this is what I could have done differently to ensure that things work from your key learnings on the back of, of the um, pro project. So another one says, yes, one more. What is the pass map for this as, as in, if I answer six out of eight questions relatively confident, is that enough? And are they in order, as in in the four competencies they've asked, they've stated online, will be this will be first, then the other questions which I didn't catch before. Sorry, whether it be a non-competency. So um I suppose the question in essence is to say, what's the pass mark? And are the would the questions be set in the in order of the competencies, how I missed listed the competencies earlier? And um, the answer to that is, I do not know. I, we, I don't know what the pass mark is. Um, that's something that only the civil service and the team who assess the questions would know. And the questions, that, and I'm, not to my knowledge, I'm not, I don't know if they are set in order according to the competencies, how I listed the competencies earlier. Um, so yeah, no, it wouldn't. There's no particular order that I'm aware of anyway. Horis, also, um, can we, uh, will you be, will we, this link be sent so we can, uh, you know, re-listen to this, re-watch this? Yes, it will be resent. yeah. Fantastic, yeah, no worries. So someone's asking, how long a break do we, do we get before each question? That's a very good question. Um, I do not know, but I know you have, potentially have that 30 seconds to practice each question. I'm assuming it may come straight away. But I don't know what the answer to that question. That's a very good question. I don't know how, how long a break you have. I would anticipate between, say, five to ten seconds. Okay, five to ten seconds. Um, another question is, do you have any other example questions around managing a quality service? Um, I do not have any other example questions around managing a quality service, unfortunately. But what I can say is maybe if you have a look through the managing the quality service again on the competency framework, and then maybe come up with questions uh, that you think they may want to ask around managing a quality service. So if I look back to managing the quality, actually managing the quality service, actually what it is. Um, so what sort of questions may come up? So it's looking at modeling professional excellence and expertise to deliver service objectives. So I could say, you know, could you tell me a time where you've had to uh, deliver uh, a set of objectives and what actions you took and what was the outcome? So that could be an example of a, a question of managing the quality service. So could you tell me about a time where you've worked on it, you've had to deliver an objective, what was the situation, what action you took and what was the outcome? 
So the main thing is, is, is more, it's less about the, the questions in itself. It's more about understanding, okay, how do I respond to these questions? What, what are they asking from me? What do they want to know? And how do I structure it? Uh, so those are the main things really about is that knowing that and getting that right is, you know, would empower you to, to respond to any respect to what the question is. That in itself is more important because you're able to address and tackle any questions, no matter how it's structured. Main thing is they normally would want to ask you what you did, what was the so what was the situation, what was the action you took, and what was the outcome. Every question will be framed around that. Well, okay, I rephrase that. Maybe not every question, but most likely the questions will be structured around that. They'll give you a similar situation. So in this case, the earlier question I mentioned is, you know. We've all had times when something we are responsible for does not work out as well as we would hope it would. So it says, describe a situation. So it gives you an idea. So what you might want to practice in the meantime is actually, okay, how would I respond to this question? So I need to list sets of examples where I've demonstrated each of these competencies. Have those ready even before you start the interview. So between now and when you start your interview, have those questions, have examples ready, structure them into, um, using the star technique, what was the situation? What was the task? What action did I take? What was the response? What was the outcome? And what were the lessons learned? So just get yourself ready by creating examples that you've real life examples against its competency areas. So that when, when you see a question, you know what to actually pick from to respond to. I hope, uh, so that's what I would suggest. And just out of interest, when do you all have your video interview? Yeah, or it's mine. I've got till Sunday, uh, seven o'clock. You got to start at seven o'clock. Excellent. Yeah. What about the rest of you? When are you? When? When is your? When are your video interviews? Uh, when is it due? So someone's have to Sunday, three a.m. Anyone else? Deadline is Sunday. It seems like a lot of the deadlines are Sundays. So earlier when we started. Um, one of the concerns were that some uh, some of you wanted to cover was um you know feel a bit nervous and wanted to find out what type of questions that they would ask and you know managing stress in terms of making sure that it's within two minutes and so on and so forth and understanding the competency areas. So with those expectations that were set at the beginning, would you say has all of these been covered? If not, please let me know before I leave. I want to make sure that everything's been covered before I leave. Um, if there's anything that hasn't been covered, please let me know now. And um, also, if, I hope for those of you who feel like your areas can come back with that, you know, so go, if I was to ask you, for example, would you, be, would you say that your, what you wanted has been covered, especially around managing how to keep things under two minutes or two and a half minutes, and also managing, has this helped, you know, how much has this helped in terms of managing the being nervous? When responding to the question, here it's one of the best feedback before I move on uh, to make sure everything's been covered. Yeah, like you say, Oris, I think with mine is uh, when, once I plan it and I actually write it down, that'll help me be more concise. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I'll say I'm also thinking about examples that you feel comfortable to share as well. Yeah, definitely. The thing is, it's just, um, I would say, try to say what you want, what you need to say within two minutes. I would not focus on the time. So just to respond to Aisha, so any tips on keeping it within two minutes? The main thing is, maybe try and write your answers under two, uh, 250 words for your answers. Say, okay, um, think about examples. Again, where's the example we have demonstrated building capability for all? What was the situation? What was the task? What was the action? Spend more time on that. And what was the result? So again, a tip would be you want to spend little time on, on the situation. You want to spend little time on the task, or you want to spend more time on the action, or particularly the actions that you took and not what happened. And then focus on elaborating on the results. If then it lasts 25 minutes, 25% uh, of the time. So to answer, again, the tip would be, just get into the habit of just writing 
your examples and practice start technique under two, using 250 words, practice that. And then usually that would be a way to, uh, to get under two minutes or within two minutes. That's my tip. That's what I would suggest. If I have any other question, I've gone slightly over time, <laughs> but I'm happy to do this. That's absolutely fine. If not, I just want to wish you all all the best for, it seems like everyone's doing their test on Sunday. I uh, remember, just going back to the tips again, remember, um, you know, be in a quiet environment, set aside an hour to avoid distractions, uh, be positive, maintain eye contact, be yourself. It's a chance for you to actually say, all the answers you're going to give are things that you have already done. The key is just think about what are the things that you've done over the years that reflects the competencies. Just focus on those things. Say what you're comfortable with, say what comes to you more naturally. That's the main thing. Remember, as I said, you do not only focus on the now, you cannot control the future. You do not know what's going to happen on the back of this. The main thing is you just want to say what you have done, give examples of those things, and just enjoy the process. Do not don't focus on the time, just focus on practice, practice, practice. In the meantime, get into the habit of getting your thoughts across in a concise manner. And by doing so, it will give you a better chance to, you know, manage the nerves on the day to also to, um, to get your views across and just to express yourself on the day. And then let the rest take care of itself. That's what I would say. Eris, Eris, you know, just one, one quick question. You know, um, the actual software that they use, you know, the, the fast stream. So they, you know, as long as your computer's got inbuilt webcam, so let, the university computers have got inbuilt webcam. Um, can you just speak directly into the webcam? And that's fine. They, they, you know, they, they should have audio, built-in audio that they can hear what you're saying. Or do you yes, have um, it should be. Well, I was going to say maybe test other video interview platforms in a, using your university computer to see how, if, if it works. Or also, you mean uh, try and find some other uh, video interview platforms on Google or something like that? Yeah, and then you practice okay. in the university computer. Okay, fantastic. And if you are going to do it using the university computer, you may want to just book a room where no one's going to be there and then maybe put aside to say, live video interview happening, please do not enter with the largest font size ever you can think of. Yeah, yeah, I've already done that. Yeah, I've made a booking. I've made a two-hour booking, so... Excellent. I'll, I'll, start, I'll start in the middle so there, there, there'd be no, like you say, nobody Good. coming in or nobody, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Good. Good. So someone's asked that, do you know how quickly they get back to you after the interview? No, I don't know, unfortunately. Yeah. All right, guys, it, uh, all the best. I'm uh, looking forward to hearing the outcome again. You know, focus on, only focus on what you can control. You can't control the outcome right now. Just focus on the now and just, you know, Go and tell them why you want to be a fast streamer. That's really what matters right now. Just tell them, give them examples, and then see what happens. All the best, and have a wonderful evening and weekend. Thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic, guys. Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. You're welcome. Bye for now. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.